Hi folks, this is a Body Maxar 100 rower and I've just been completing a repair on it and I had a secondary fault where the speed sensor signal uh, wasn't working and therefore the uh, machine wouldn't run. So mechanically it works just fine. Uh, but it got me thinking about how the speed and the uh, particular strokes per minute and how the meters works on these machines and it got me uh, looking at the system and I thought there's interest, some interesting things here that's worth um, shooting and sharing with you. Um, so in my experience with rowers, one of the first things you would always check if you've got a speed sensor problem is the power adapter. Not the obvious thing to check really, but uh, it's really important that you get the right power supply on these because I've seen more than one uh, type of machine where the customer's quite easily muddled up the power adapter and they've got it confused with another variety of some other products and although the plugs the same the power adapter has not got the right current uh, and this machine needs a 6 volts DC 1 amp power supply and if the problem is if you run it on perhaps a half an amp or three quarters of an amp you might find there's enough power to light the console up but there won't be enough power necessarily to drive all the mechanism and to make the speed sensors work so first thing to check is always a power supply Make sure that it matches, and if you're not sure what it should be, then just rate something that's at least an amp, an amp or higher, uh, should be plenty to make the system work. Um, so the other part of the system I was looking at was how the mechanism actually gets its speed signal. And I'm just going to come around the other side and just show you uh, something that confused me. It was a bit of a red herring. I was looking for the speed sensors originally and I saw the magnet on here on this uh, fan. This is part of the flywheel mechanism. So straight away I was looking for the speed sensor that goes along with that because I'd expect to see it somewhere on the frame, maybe down here, somewhere around here and of course it's not there, there's no speed sensor. So this is, this is again a generic part which on some other product there will be a speed sensor but on this particular product there's not but the manufacturer's left the uh, the magnet in place probably because of balance to keep the fan balanced so um, that's not used on this machine so a complete red herring so after i'd established that i thought well where is the speed sensor and actually found it lurking under here and in fact there's two of them there's two of them side by side which you may be able to see there and what they do, I'd, I'd been working on this mechanism here and I'd actually pushed the speed sensors back. They're in this little sort of plastic carriage and I'd just push them back. And they were too far away from the magnets. There must be a number of magnets inside the bit that turns in, inside the uh, spring mechanism here. And as you pull on the cord and rotate this mechanism, then the magnets will pass in front of the speed sensors and uh, trigger the the system to record the speed. Then I thought, well, why have they got two? And then, of course, you start to think about that, and the system, it becomes apparent as to why they've got two. It's because they need to measure both meters and strokes per minute. Of course, you can measure meters just by using a speed sensor, because you can detect the rate at which the magnet is passing by and do some calculations in software and determine the meters. But strokes per minute, you have to have two, because you need to know which direction this is turning. In other words, are you pulling back or are you releasing the mechanism? And if you're pulling back, you're going to get one of these switches will trigger just a moment before the other. And if, if you're releasing, you'll get, it'll be swapped. The other one will be triggering first, just a moment before the second. So again, by knowing that, the software can make a calculation and determine whether you're pulling back or whether you're releasing, and therefore it can work out the strokes per minute. So. I thought that in itself was quite, it's quite an ingenious way of doing it, quite neat, and I've also seen it on other products, so that was worth a look and worth sharing. And the final thing that interested me was the brake mechanism here. If I come up, you can probably see the permanent magnets which are glued into the flywheel there, so they rotate. And we've got this silver plate. This silver plate is on uh, a tension mechanism. Here. and if I exaggerate it there, if I pull on those tension cables, can you see how the plate is moving away from or further towards the magnets? And there's a spring down inside there, so it's a bit like a clutch plate. It obviously doesn't contact. But I thought that's quite neat. And the whole mechanism here is controlled through the tension cable down to the brake servo, which is the standard, standard kind of product.
standard way of doing things on these sort of machines. But they've just adapted the technology slightly uh, to do this, and I thought in itself that's quite interesting. So, uh, so there you go. So I hope that's been a bit of an insight, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.